welcome to our next to last episode of Coach's Corner for basketball season 2008-2009. My name's Andy Bortz, glad to have you with us. And first we're going to start off with women's basketball and joining me in the hot seat is the newest member of the 100 plus win club, head coach Roseanne Scott. <laughs> coach, welcome to the show. Thank you. Congratulations last night on that big win, number 100. It was another down to the wire game as, as we, <laughs> most of the fans found out and it was a game to avoid having you be in the total basement of the PAC conference. So mm -hmm. is that a big relief to get that 100th win off your, off your chest? Uh, yeah, I get, yeah, it, it was. Uh, the more relief was, was beating Chatham and getting a step further out of the, the basement for um, what we want to finish the year as. So that was more uh, what I was more relieved with. So. so explain to everyone exactly what the disadvantage would have been if you would have had to be in that total bottom part of the conference if that win didn't happen. Um, well, the bottom, obviously the 10th seed plays the 1 seed, and the 1 seed right now is Thomas Moore. Um, and even our game against Teal on Saturday, um, we're, us and Teal were tied for the second to the last, um, and then that team would obviously play W and J. So we're trying not to to play those two teams right away in the first round. So Saturday, we're not out of the we're not out of the, the clear yet. We still have Saturday to to to. Um, to focus on. Absolutely. And last week we were pretty much just getting your thoughts of what it would be like to have a hundred wins on your resume and you mentioned how you didn't even realize that it was in your sights. Uh, have mm -hmm. you had time to actually reflect on reaching a milestone like this? Have you had time to let it sink in? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Not, no. Um, I think the yesterday was such a exhausting. I was like exhausted after the game. It was a close game. Um, our, our kids worked hard. I felt like I worked just as hard. I felt like I played the game after. <laughs> but um, no, I really haven't. Maybe after season's done and I have time to, to sit back. But um, I've been, I mean, it's just been a great opportunity to be here at Westminster and have the opportunity. And um, I've been blessed with, with great student athletes and great support um, with, my, with my family. And um, it's just, it's great that everyone could be um, a part of it. You know, it seems like the milestone wins are the toughest to get. Is there any explanation as to why that seems that way, or is it just a coincidence that when you think about it, all of a sudden it's harder and harder to get, and then once you get it, it gets a little easier? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know why that that works out that way. But I mean, I think we just kind of not. I, I know the the kids were were excited after the game. They drowned me with water and, and <laughs> stuff like that, and um, I think they really were were happy. They they got it and. Um, they, they, they do. They work hard, and I think it was not just about me getting that. It was them getting over, getting over the you know the, the losing streak and getting that confidence back. Well, it's good that they're going to get that confidence back. And let's t break that game down a little bit against Chatham. And uh, it was about the team making the big shots at the end, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it was close at the end, and then a couple big shots put them up over. Did any strategy from that first game that you guys played against Chatham help you guys out in winning this game? Yeah, it did. Um, it, you knew who their shooters were. You knew, you know, what was going, what was going on. But they, Chatham actually ran, is, was, they have uh, some kids hurt, so they changed their offense. So they, it was a completely different what we saw them the first time. Um, and defensively, they switched things up on us um, from Very the first time. They were like switching screens, so and that's why when we were able to get the ball inside there at the end and score it with, with M scoring that last two bucket, well, which, well, which was huge. So we knew we were going to have a mismatch in there. So um, we looked for the Dolsack sisters. It was like one her or the, or the other, and that <laughs> was the option that ended up being open was M. Well, they were obviously the dominating figures in the game. and. Talk about that other big performance out of Amy Dolsack, a tied her career high of 25 points. How important was a game like this to her to help the team get back into that confidence streak? I think Amy's been down. Um, she has she, her shots haven't been falling, and for her to to get those those bunnies and those shots to fall for her, um, she she was smart um, offensively yesterday. She wasn't forcing things that weren't there. Um, she made some some good passes. We had uh, I think 12 assists. Um, at the end of the game, which showed that we were making that extra pass, and, and it helped us not to try to force things. And, and we didn't, um, when the shot clock came down, it wasn't you know too many uh, shots getting fired up that weren't that weren't good ones. Now, what we didn't mention was that the win against Chatham snapped a seven-game losing <coughs> streak, and during all of those games, many of them were close. I mean, mm -hmm. with the exception of Thomas Moore and W and J, who are on top of the pack right now, but all the games were pretty close. So, what was the difference in this game that helped them get over the top? We took care of the ball. I mean, we first half we didn't. We had 14 turnovers, but we still played good defense and, and kept it close. In the second half, we only had um, 
we finished with 17, so we only had three turnovers, mm -hmm. and that's that's the difference. When we give ourselves opportunities um, to to score, it, it it it's make better decisions, and I think that was the the big thing with Waynesburg. We just came out not ready. I mean, we just it was like a completely different team. So we played 40 minutes of consistency yesterday was the big difference. Now you talk about the game against Waynesburg too. It was similar in that a lot of turnovers occurred in the first half, but in the mm -hmm. second half the game really cleaned up. Is there anything that you can say in a locker room to help with ball control or is that just something that has to be worked on in practices? I think both. I think it, we work on it in practice, but then, you know, it's once the lights get turned on and the spotlight, it's like I don't know if they get, you know, tense up or they feel the, the, I don't know. <laughs> so, but it's 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 a mental thing um, with them to uh, be able to take care of it, and I think it's it's a little bit of both. And pulling out the game yesterday, we haven't been able to win close games, so being able to pull that out, I think, helped with their with their confidence. Now, talking of big games, Chatham obviously was a big game for you guys, and now you're coming up to Teal. And first game was exciting. I remember when Gina Brunetti hit that three ball from sonar range. It seemed like to get the game to go to overtime. What did you notice about that first game that'll help you when you're going to Teal, which is a tough place to win at? I think what, what's, what's gonna help us is um, carrying the momentum from Wednesday and defensively, you know, um, being more, more physical and knowing um, what they're gonna do. Um, that they're gonna try to, you know, Amber's Amber. You know, she's gonna get her point. She's a great, great athlete. And um, being able to contain her, but being able to shut down everybody else um, is 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 the key, but offensively working together is going to be the big thing. It seems like your defensive strategy has been able to really control Amber Bodrick, talking about the star player of Teal. What's in Coach Scott's book of secrets that contains her when she's on offense? I think being physical with her, um, and, and physical to the point of not, you know, she doesn't like to be boxed out. She doesn't like, you know, she, she's a finesse type of player, and so when you're in her face and, and she gets she gets taken out of her game and then she wants to prove obviously she wants the ball in her hands and and when she tries to force things it it, it kind of takes her out of her rhythm so and I, and I think her and Gina since coming again from um, same high school <laughs> graduated together I think they both you know have a have a little rivalry with that so it it, it helps Gina always gets excited to, to play her so it's gonna be an interesting matchup on Saturday well coach thank you so much for being here again congratulations on achieving a hundred wins in your career thank you and we're gonna have Roseanne Heineman coming up next on the show stick around you're watching coaches corner here on the Westminster Cable Network Picture yourself at Westminster College. Westminster offers an educational experience that is second to none. We've been exceeding students' expectations for 150 years. Westminster combines the prestige of a national liberal arts college with the personal attention you deserve. Westminster is a national leader in graduation rate performance and is the most affordable national liberal arts college in Pennsylvania. Visit Westminster's beautiful 300-acre campus to experience an ideal learning environment. Succeed at Westminster College. And welcome back to Coach's Corner. I'm Andy Bortz. Now we're up for our women's player segment. And joining us in the hot seat, making her mark off the bench, is Roseanne Heinemann. Roseanne, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, you've definitely had your opportunities this particular season to get out on the floor and, and show what you can do. Were you feeling any pressure earlier this season when you realized that you were starting to get more minutes with the team on the court? Um, I wouldn't say I felt more pressure. Um, the team is really, like, helpful, and they really kind of understand, like, where you come from. So they try and take a lot of the pressure off of you, but for, it's still pressureful, but 
not that bad. And it doesn't seem like you get a ton of minutes each game. You average eight a game, but you, you've been able to score a rapid number of points in a short time in each of those games. How, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there's really a method. <laughs> it just kind of works that way. Um, in high school, I was more of an offensive player than a defensive player, so I guess I'm just carrying that on to college. So. And it's been a pretty tough season so far. I think you can attest to that in the last few games especially. And as one of the younger players, do you look to the leadership and the coaches and the junior, senior players to keep you motivated? Or is that something that you kind of have to bring on yourself to try and keep motivated? I think that the leadership does keep you motivated. Everyone is really, um, they're really like good about that kind of thing. Um, but you also have to look to yourself a lot too, like to keep yourself going. But it's a mixture. <laughs> okay. Uh, talking about being one of the younger players, I had a lot of guests we had on the show before talk about team chemistry and how things have changed after Emily Ackerman and the other seniors graduated last year. Have you found that to be a difficult challenge at this point in the season, trying to get that chemistry back together? Um, we are pretty. We are a younger team, and we have a lot more, like I don't want to say youth, but mm -hmm. more people that need to like learn how to play in college, and. Overall, I think we've done a lot better with getting our chemistry together. Like in the beginning, it was harder, but now, like I feel like everyone's doing really good with like bonding with each other and knowing like where everything is, and it helps a lot now with um, Emily Dolsack because she's like a sister, so they like have ESPN and they can like, talk to <laughs> each other. So. Absolutely, and can you describe? what the biggest challenge is coming from high school to playing in a college environment is is it really pace of the game that's the big difference or are there other things that really are affecting a change from high school to college play um, I think it's more it's very more physical um, you have to be stronger and mentally more mentally tough um, but other than that it's pretty much the same pace is the same but it's just like you have to be more tough at least that's how it is for me. Okay, and now we talked before, you're getting more minutes on the floor and you play, you're another one of those players who get your teammates fired up when you're at, you make those big plays on the floor. Can you talk about how your effect on the spirit and the attitude of the team makes you fire them up? I mean, it's obviously one of those things that motivates everybody. So talk about what that emotion is like when you are a motivator to other people on the team. Well, it makes me get motivated more. Like whenever I see everyone else get all fired up because of something I did, it makes me want to do it again and keep like, um, firing up my team and making things work better for them and I feel like it's the same for everyone else like if they do something good and everyone gets excited they just want to keep doing the same good things so and I think that's what pushes us through the games now it could just be my ears but whenever you ladies are on the court before a game I warming up I, I hear some of your teammates refer to you as Fox is there <laughs> a story behind that um, it's really not that interesting of a story <laughs> Um, everyone when I first came here thought my name was Roxanne instead of Roseanne. Oh. And so everyone just started calling me like Roxy and then just came to Foxy Roxy and then Fox and it just stuck. Wow. So. <laughs> hey, well, you know, you have the same known, name as Coach Scott. Is there ever any confusion whenever somebody says Roseanne? Do you always like turn your head around like, are you talking to me? Um, it used to be, especially <laughs> in freshman year, but now like no one calls me Roseanne anymore. Like I don't think probably over half the campus knows me as Fox because that's just how everyone refers to me now. So I don't think there's much confusion with that anymore because only the coaches call me Roseanne. See, that is an interesting story. You said it <laughs> wouldn't be interesting. Uh, so the playoffs are getting closer now, Roseanne. In your eyes, what does your team need to do to be ready for the challenges that are lying ahead in playoffs? I think that everyone needs to get mentally focused and keep like their eye on what's coming up. Um, I feel like we all need to like keep going strong like how we have and really carry off our enthusiasm from this win and then coach's 100th win and carry that on for the rest of the season. It's a good thing to talk about. What was, how did you feel when you realized that Coach Scott picked up career win number 100 last night? I, to be honest, before I didn't even know that she had 100 wins and after the Waynesburg game they told me and I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> so, um, after the game, we were all so excited, not only because we won and broke our losing streak, but also because Coach finally got our 100th win and everyone was just so excited. What do you think was the big difference in the game against Chatham that helped you guys get over the top and finally break that losing streak? Um, I think that we came out um, focused and ready to go to start out the game. And then um, despite like all the turnovers that we had, everyone like stayed focused through the whole game and everyone, like we wanted, I feel like we wanted the game more than Chatham did. Now. You obviously were with the team when they went to the PAC championship game last year. What can you learn 
from an experience like that to help you this season and as the playoffs come near? Oh, wow. We just need to, uh, I felt like I learned that you just need to be really enthusiastic because I feel like despite whether you're on the court or on the bench, it carries no matter where you go. And the enthusiasm and the excitement will carry out onto the uh, court. And then that will inspire your teammates to want to do better. Excellent. Well, Roseanne, good luck for the rest of the season, and we'll be talking about you more soon. Okay, thank you. And we'll be back with assistant coach Bob Kerr of the men's team. Stick around. You're watching Coach's Corner on the Westminster Cable Network. Okay, girls, it's 3 o'clock. What is he looking at? Oh, don't, so obvious. Captain Obvious has scored again. Open your window. Say something. Oh, he's really going to down. Hi. 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 Hey, guys. Hi. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Hey, I got a filet of sole and a cracked crab for Mr. Studied Higher Math back in school and now can order expensive lunches and charge it to the company. Uh, he's in a meeting. I'm his never studied algebra, calculus, or any other kind of math. Now I'm stuck in this dead-end job assistant. Can you sign for it? Well, it's about the only thing I'm qualified to do. That and answer phones for Mr. AP Calculus and number theory expert with the big office upstairs. That's my second delivery. And I got a French crepe and a white truffle sauce for uh, Miss Advanced Algebra and Higher Math scores that got her a job as a project manager. Next office down the hall. Cool. Hey, have a good one. You too. Welcome back to Coach's Corner. I'm Andy Bortz. We're now in the men's segment of the show, and we're switching gears a little bit. We brought in assistant coach Bob Kerr. Coach, glad to have you on the show for the first time this year. Thank you, Andy. And, you know, most people think of the name of assistant coach, and they wonder what exactly fits into the role of assistant coach. So what do you do for the team with that title? Well, um, being an assistant coach um, is, at times, a thankless job. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of the behind-the-scenes work. Uh, you know, anywhere from helping out washing uniforms or practice stuff to, to you know, the biggest thing that I've always tried to explain to people is the film exchange with, with opposing teams uh, within the conference and teams throughout the country. You know, when I was a high school coach uh, at Newcastle and Elwood City, you, you know, you wanted to exchange film. You just drove down 79 or drove down 60 and, and handed someone a tape and exchanged that film. Well, you can't drive out to California now to a school out in California that wants a tape of our game being played in December or November or whatever, and, and uh, so it's just not that it's just not that uh, easy. Um, it is a lot more difficult from that sense, and so you rely a lot on uh, FedEx, and, and, <laughs> and it's always a nightmare at times. The tape never shows up. Uh, actually, we had an issue this year with Thomas Moore, a conference game. We were supposed to be getting a tape from them. Uh, their Bethany game, but they had that serious ice storm down in Kentucky, right. and that screwed up the exchange. Oh so, my. so we were left out without uh, a film for that game. But you know, but that's some of the things that you have to go with. Um, you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff, anyway. Um, you know, and as well as being an assistant coach, you're also the, the mediator or the buffer between the head coach and, mm -hmm. and the kids. Um, the head coach is always seen as the villain or Doctor Evil, <laughs> and then uh, the assistant coach is the one that's able to pull the kids aside and and um, Calm them down and let them know uh, that, that everything's okay and keep the encouragement up. Uh, now, I did have a blowout uh, at the WJ game <laughs> at halftime, so uh, every once in a while we are allowed to speak our mind, and, and I did have to give the kids a piece of my mind on uh, at halftime of that game. So, But that, for, for the most part, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, in a, we're, we're, we're someone that's a mediator and a buffer between the head coach and the kids. Um, along with all the, um, the behind-the-scenes stuff that no one knows about. Now I want to ask, you mentioned being a high school basketball coach. Yeah. What's the biggest difference when you're coming from high school, uh, from a high school environment and coming to coach in a college environment? Well, the great thing about college is obviously you can go out and recruit kids and, and bring them here. Um, at high school, as an assistant and, a, and as a head coach, uh, you have to play with the, the hand that's been dealt with you. So, um, you know, it's it's you, you hope that you get you can have a good a good uh, um, set of players coming through while you're there, but there's no guarantees for that. It's 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 the dealt that you know it's the hand that you've been dealt. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, you can only do with, uh, with what's been dealt with you, and, and you try to make the best of it. Here at the collegiate level, um, you, you can go out and recruit kids, bring them here, and uh, you know those are hand-picked kids that you feel can be successful in your program. Now let's talk about the last game for the Titans against Waynesburg a little bit. I mean, obviously that was a big game for you guys, but I remember Dr. B and I were on the radio side of the game. We looked up at the scoring monitor, which tells us the starters, and we did not see one single of the regular starters in the lineup. Can you explain how that affected the energy of the team as the game went on? Well, I, um, I, I don't know how I can explain that. I think it was just something that Coach Ondenko uh, wanted to do. He wanted to, to uh, maybe... Um, stir some things up maybe uh, after the WJ performance that we did have and um, so he figured let's go ahead and, and, and mix this up a little bit and not that it was going to be a, um, a, a long stay, a stay with those starters I think he just kind of wanted to uh, send a message to say hey guys look you know we three games in a row we have not gotten out of the gate very well so I'm gonna give five guys that work just as hard uh, throughout practice and, 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 and during the other games, they deserve a shot. And I think that's what, um, that's what his message was. And I think that uh, the kids got the message because especially the starters, they, they came out and, and they did an admirable job uh, against Waynesburg to start the game. Who impressed you the most in those first few minutes of that game coming off the bench like that? Um, I would ha definitely have to say Louis Pisani. Uh, he had a career high uh, on the game. Um, Louis... Uh, you know, I, I think Louis is a much better player than he has shown at times, and, and that game right there showed, I think, the true Louis Pisani. I mean, that's, that's the player I saw when I went and recruited him uh, out at St. Mary's. So he, he definitely was, was, was a bright spot uh, out of that starting five. And I mean, and not singling him out, but I think the other four also were also admirable in what they did. All right, Coach, we'll stick around. We're going to pick your brain a little bit more coming up. We'll talk about playoffs in a little bit, too. Stick around. You're watching Coach's Corner on the Westminster Cable Network. scary? Then log on to LOC.gov and see how much fun it can be. The Library of Congress at LOC.gov. One day these rats were playing in the woods. One of some rats is a fast no good. So of the gorgeous forces, what you decide? Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. Yeah. Only you can prevent forest fires. Fire! Back on our final segment of Coach's Corner, going to pick Coach Bob Kerr's brain a little bit, coming up to the playoffs here. Obviously, a few games remaining for the guys. Teal coming up this weekend, but with a bye game this week, you didn't have to play. You got a chance to look around the pack at some of the other games happening, and uh, you got some help to possibly attain that second seed in the pack conference. Explain what, what's been happening in the pack that's allowed this opportunity to come about. Right. Well, um, last night uh, was a big game last night down at Thomas Moore. And uh, actually, we needed Thomas Moore to win that game against Washington and Jefferson, which they did. So Thomas Moore is pretty much locked up. They, they've locked up the number one seed um, for the PAC tournament. Uh, but with that loss, uh, Thomas Je or uh, Washington and Jefferson suffered. It now opens up the door for us to win Saturday at Teal and somehow find a way to win at Bethany, which would give us the number two seed. Uh, and the reason why that would happen is because uh, Bethany and W and Jane head to head action. Bethany has beaten W and J once already. They have to play the last uh, game of the season uh, in pack play. So even if W and J splits that, uh, if we were to beat Bethany twice, by virtue of us beating Bethany twice, then beating W J once, that would then give us a number two seed. Now, how about those Titans this season? It's quite a story. 0 and 11 to start the season, and then 
I remember the game against Washington and Jefferson on the road. W and J was picked to win it all this year, and they were able to go into Washington and Jefferson. They were able to beat them, and that's when the, everything started to really click. What do you think was the biggest difference between those first eleven games and this recent stretch when the Titans have been on fire? Well, I think that um, the, the thing I try to stress a lot, a lot to the guys is that um, you know, granted, granted, it was is it was a dismal start to the season, and nobody wants to go through that. Okay, mm -hmm. but. The thing I kept trying to stress to our players is that um, with the conference tournament and the automatic qualifier into the NCAA tournament, it doesn't matter what we did those first first 11 games or 10 games or whatever it may be. There's still that carrot out there that's dangling for us to, for us to go after something. So that's what makes the automatic qualifier of the of the conference so big. So I think just uh, maintaining a, and, and keeping a positive attitude and, and making them understand that uh, this year there's no like overpowering team in our conference. Anybody can beat anybody on any given day and all you do is need a stretch where, where you put it all together and, and in a couple weeks we're going to be able to see that. Uh, any team can get hot at that stretch and, and run the table and make the tournament. So that's, that's what we're looking for and that's what we're trying to stay with right now. It's just a positive approach and um, the, ki the kids are playing better. I think we're all starting to get our legs underneath us and and, and, and play the basketball that we're capable of playing. Now, I talked to Coach Ondeka about this, too, but you did mention it as well. All of these pack games this season have been really close, very competitive. It's a very competitive conference this year. Anything can happen. Are there any concerns for any of the teams that are left in the schedule before playoffs that you put a big red circle around on the calendar? Well, I, I don't think that at any time with the conference uh, being the way that it is, the, the parity level is, is so, so even that uh, you can chalk up wins. You can't, we just, nobody can chalk up wins. Um, that's why you have to come ready to play every night, uh, no matter where you're playing. Now we're playing at Teal, who's in last place in the conference. And, and you mentioned it with uh, Coach Scott, that notoriously Westminster does not play well at Teal College. And so uh, it's a game where you just can't take it for granted. You have to go in. We have to give the same effort that we've been giving. And, um, you know, ho hope that we lay the chips, chips down, that, that everything, everything comes out okay for us. Why is it difficult to win at Teal? Is there anything I, you can I put in words? I don't know. I just, I wish I had an answer for that. Um, I, I think it's such a mental thing. Uh, you know, that's the only thing I can put it on. Um, their, their court's no different size than ours. Only you know, seating on one side, uh, you know, the lighting, they changed the lighting in there. It used to be that real dismal orange type lighting in there that maybe you could attribute some poor shooting efforts to up there. But for the most part, um, you know, everybody seems to play better at home anyway. So, you know, it just, it just takes a better effort by the road team to have to go up there in a good mindset to go in and take care of business. And last question, what do you think the Titans need to keep doing in order to be able to keep up the streak that they've been keeping alive? Well, I think that, um, one, um, health is always an issue with us. Stephen Bielik's knee, you know, 6'8 uh, kid that um, has had uh, some great games in the past and has been very, very dominant at times when he's been on the floor. But because of his knee situation, that's always an issue uh, that we have to deal with every night. And I think continued bench play is always a key. Well, if you get key contributors coming off the bench to support the cast that we already have, it is always another key. All right, Coach. Well, good luck against Teal this weekend, and hopefully you guys can lock up that second seed in the packed conference. Okay, thanks, Andy. All right, thank you for watching Coach's Corner. One more episode to go after this. I'm Andy Bortz. Have a great evening.